Hey guys, Mac here from Mac Media Presents, and today I have another video for you. So, just to quickly get this out of the way, because I always do it now at the beginning and don't really mention it anymore. Um, if you like the video, be sure to hit like, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell to be notified, and let me know in the comments below on any thoughts or how you'd like to see me improve the channel, because feedback is key to me. Uh, get the plug out of the way. That's the best way to go. So, today I want to do something a little bit different to what I do, and I'm hoping to maybe start this as sort of like a way of doing different videos. Maybe do stuff like news stories and stuff like that as well. Um, but today I want to do something that's getting me a little bit excited, um, and that is E3 predictions. So, in case you're not exactly aware of what E3 is... For us gamers, it's pretty much like Christmas come early. It's where we can sit and have a watch of what game developers have been working on all across the industry. You know, what they've got in store for us, how they can surprise us, excite us. Show us what we, can be, what we could be playing within the next three to four years. Um... Normally it's sooner than that, I just say that as kind of like in case of delays. But, obviously this year there's been a lot of, um, diff there's been a lot of different changes to E3 this year. Obviously Sony and EA have dropped out of E3 this year, so they're not holding any big conferences. Um, this year's primary conferences are going to be for Microsoft, Square Enix, Bethesda, Ubisoft and Nintendo. Uh, there will obviously be those, like, uh, the PC gaming show and, uh, Devolver Digital. And while I'm not giving any discredit to Devolver Digital, the PC gaming show is just full of cringe. Um, the reason I don't mention the Devolver Digital one is because I haven't seen any of them. I've wanted to watch them, I just need to go back and watch them eventually. But, um, so I can't exactly make any comments or predictions on Devolver's shows. Uh, I have heard they are really good, though. But, despite me saying what I've just said, today's video is going to be, like I said, an E3 prediction video, and I am predicting Sony. Now, Sony have already confirmed they're not going to be doing a conference at E3 this year. However... That doesn't exclude the possibility of them having an of a uh, sorry uh, of them having a state of play, which is pretty much Sony's answer to the Nintendo Direct, or as people have been calling it, the Cloney Direct. Um, but yeah, so the idea is though I wanted to discuss what I think could potentially show up at. A Sony state of play maybe in early June now I know there's a as of recording this and by the time this video is up there should still be a Sony state of play coming a few days from now uh, on May 9th now they've already confirmed that this is only gonna be about 10 minutes long 15 minutes if you're in Japan I believe is what they also said so what I feel they're doing here is they're maybe announcing some lighter titles and then they'll probably expand on it a lot more when it comes to E3. I believe they may do a longer 30 to 40 minute direct, like direct or com uh, video state of play thing. I'm, you know, I'm just going to call it the Sony Direct for now because it's a lot easier to say than state of play. And in all honesty, I don't want to get my... I don't want to get tongue twisted. So. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Um. I do believe that we're going to get one closer to E3. Main reason is... Sony... Even though they said they don't really have much to show off. And, you know, they're pretty much gearing up for the PlayStation 5. 
I feel they actually have a lot to show off because there's a lot of things that we don't really know about. For example, we don't know stuff about Last of Us 2, we don't know stuff about Death Stranding, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Dreams, we don't have an official release date for Dreams yet, which is the, you know, I mean, yeah, it's an early access, but it's not the official full game. You know, there's stuff like Concrete Genie, there's stuff like Medieval, which we are finding out about in the May 9th one. But, anyway, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it, so I just want to jump straight in. Uh, I'll just quickly give you a brief overhead on how I'm going to be splitting this up. So, I want to talk about first party titles I think could appear first. Then I'll go into third party. Then into PlayStation VR. Then into my wild card selection. Um, so yeah, let's just get straight into it. First prediction I'm going to make for first party is that we could see a new Ratchet and Clank game. Now, it's been a few years since Ratchet and Clank uh, PS4 came out. And there has been teasers recently and... I believe there's been rumours flying around that there is another Ratchet and Clank game in the works for the PlayStation 4. Um, anyone, if you can correct me if I'm wrong if, in the comments, but I'm, I'm sure I saw something online saying it was Colin Moriarty who was teasing it or something. Um, but yeah, um, I feel it has been a while since we saw Ratchet and Clank appear on the PS4. Plus, I mean, when you consider how frequent their games were, I mean... You know, if you look at the P if you look at the PlayStation Two, they had obviously they had the original trilogy. They had Dead uh, Ratchet Gladiator. They had um, the PSP games ported over as well with Secret Agent Clank and Size Matters. You know, as I said, the PSP they had two PS Vita. They had a good few games available on the PS Vita. Uh, PlayStation Three, you had loads of Ratchet and Clank games. You had the HD collection. You had you know, the HD remaster of Gladiator, you had the Future Trilogy, you had Full Frontal Assault, um, Nexus, you had, uh, All For One. There was so many Ratchet and Clank games around on the PlayStation 3. And I mean, that's excluding PlayStation Move Heroes as well, which included them. So, for the PS4 to only have one Ratchet and Clank game is a bit weird to me. Um... Now, obviously, I feel Insomniac could be too busy maybe working on a Spider-Man sequel or, um, God forbid, a Sunset Overdrive sequel for Xbox. Please, please, Insomniac, please be working on that. Um, I'd like to see a new Ratchet & Clank game, and hopefully it's not just a remake or sequel to the movie, because, in all fairness, while I enjoyed the movie, it wasn't great. Um, but yeah, so I feel they may reveal the new Ratchet and Clank game, and given the roundabout release of Ratchet and Clank uh, on PS4, I'm gonna take a stab in the dark and say March 2020 will be the sort of area they reveal it for. Moving on, the next one I want to talk about is Last of Us Part 2. Now, The Last of Us Part 2 has been rumoured very heavily in the past few months. You know, there's been... Supposed retailer leaks where they've been teasing it's going to be coming in October or it's going to be coming 2019. And so I definitely feel we are going to be seeing some new gameplay from The Last of Us Part 2. Um, obviously there's also the rumours that we're going to be seeing some more of this game before E3. Now whether this means the mere 9th direct, uh, direct that's coming or whether it means that we're going to be getting it maybe early June... If this rumour is correct, we could be seeing The Last of Us Part 2 very soon. And hopefully we see some new gameplay. I want to see... See, obviously we've seen gameplay of... Um, or, or at least a cutscene of, you know, those other survivors. One who I believe is Ellie's mom. I really do think Ellie's mom's in this game. Uh... Then we've obviously seen the gameplay with Ellie, where she was um, taking out all the bandits or the, uh, the fireflies or whatever the hell they were. I can't be sure if they were fireflies or not. I need to rewatch that footage. Um, but the one thing we haven't seen, except for 
in the very first reveal trailer as a CGI moment is Joel. We haven't seen Joel in this game at all. And so I feel the best way to close out gameplay showing for this game would be to show off some gameplay maybe involving Joel. Uh, not not so much Joel as a playable character because I feel having Ellie as the playable character and maybe having a section where you play as Joel, similar to the first Last of Us game, where you play as Ellie for a little bit, I think keeping that a surprise would be great. But I do think we should see Joel at least in some capacity for the marketing. Um... So yeah, I believe we're going to get some new gameplay for Last of Us. Maybe show off a few more new game mechanics if they've decided to incorporate any. And I honestly think it could be getting an October 2019 release window. I mean, obviously it recently filmed. It recently finished filming and wrapping up. Um, so with the amount of time it can take to render and stuff, they could definitely get it out by October. So I'm going to say that as a guess, like a guesstimate. But I do think it could get delayed. Or it could get maybe... So if it did get announced in October, I think it could get delayed. But, um... I think the max I think it could be coming out is either December 2019 or January 2020. That's my honest opinion for The Last of Us. Next thing I want to see for First Party is Death Stranding. Now, Death Stranding is a game that I've been very on the fence about. Um, you know, I love Hideo Kojima. I'm, I'm not denying that Hideo Kojima is a genius, but... There's only so much cryptic BS that I can take. You know, it's... I think after a while you kind of have enough of the whole cryptic... The crypticness. I want to see what the game is actually about. You know, I mean, we saw some gameplay. Yeah, we have seen gameplay for Death Stranding, but we've only seen gameplay of Norman Reedus walking over a mountain. I mean, it was like a goddamn Lord of the Rings movie without the fighting. Um, you know, so I I don't want to see I don't want to see Lord I don't want to see Lord of the Rings with Norman Reedus. I want to see some actual action. I mean, it's going to be an action game. You know, maybe, obviously, maybe show off some gunfire with Norman Reedus' character. Maybe show off more of Troy Baker's uh, Golden Masked character. Um, you know, maybe maybe something with Guillermo del Toro's. You know, I'd like to see something new. I mean, obviously, I feel Mads Mikkelsen's going to be the villain, so... I, I don't know, I just want to see some more footage from Death Stranding in terms of gameplay. I want to see that, and I think we could potentially get it via a new trailer because obviously uh recently Hideo Kojima was at the Tribeca Film Festival um you know if you haven't heard about it uh Jeff Cayley was there he was interviewing him having a talk with him I think uh there's some pictures online of uh Hideo Kojima with uh, Robert De Niro as well at that place but he did mention that he was um he was editing a trailer together so I do feel like we could see something from Death Stranding soon. And I think the end of this trailer might reveal it's coming in 2020. My reason... My reasons for that will be um, revealed a little bit later in this video, but I am thinking 2020. Next one. And I'm mentioning this purely just because even though I know it's coming on Thursday, I know it's coming... In the May 9th Clony Direct. Um, I want to... This is just the things I want to see in it. I want to see this stuff revealed. So. I want to see a lot more footage on Medieval. Medieval is a game. They announced it at the PlayStation Experience. All the way back in 2017. And... I, I'm, I'm going to be quite frank. The PlayStation experience in 2017 was terrible. It was awful. So bad. And, um... Yeah. Having Medieval as the announcement was a really clever move because it kind of partially redeemed what was a terrible show. Um... They said 
when that got revealed, that it will be out 2018, and they left it at that. And we didn't hear anything until October 2018, where they confirmed it was coming in 2019 with a trailer. And it was just, like, obviously it showed off some of the new environments and stuff like that that they'd remade. And it looked great. It did look great. But I think now they really need to show some footage. They need to show, maybe show off some of the boss fights. Maybe show off the, uh, the stained glass window boss fight. Um, one thing I'd like to see involved with Medieval is I'd maybe like to see some elements of Medieval 2 confirmed. Because the way I see it is, Medieval's great, okay? Medieval is a fantastic game. It was a, a great piece of nostalgia and a great throwback to my childhood. But by this point, when the PS4 one comes out, Medieval will have been remade twice. You know, we have, because obviously we have Medieval on the PS1, we have Medieval Resurrection on the PSP, and now we've got Medieval on the PS4. Medieval 2 is the one that keeps getting forgotten about, and Medieval 2 was a fantastic game. There was a lot of elements there. I mean, hell, I remember in Medieval 2, there was a bit where, um, you'd be, I think it was in like a museum, there's a level where you're in a museum, and, um, like, I think it's, like, the skeleton of a dinosaur. I think it might be a T-Rex or it might be a Triceratops. But, um, it smashes down, like, a wall and it starts attacking you. And it's, like, a big boss fight. And I love that. I love the fact they involved a dinosaur in it. And, but Medieval 2 is always forgotten about. And I think I'd like to see Medieval 2 incorporated somehow into this new game. But anyway, now I'm just starting to chatter on. Um... I feel when Medieval gets its new footage, it will get an October 2019 release date. And I think more than that, they'll also do a, um, sort of like a pre-order today announcement as well, where you can pre-order it as soon as the direct is up. Hopefully, if you do pre-order it, you get maybe some... I don't know, maybe, maybe something related to Medieval 2. I, I just love that. So anyway, moving on. Next thing I want to mention, and I just want to quickly mention this off the cuff because I did just think about it, I think, about 20 minutes ago. I feel we may even, I feel we may even see some footage of the Days Gone DLC. Now, Days Gone has obviously been, it's been released uh, just this previous month gone. Um, it, it received good reviews. It wasn't the best reviews primarily i completely disagree with any reviews that said it was only good uh i i'm loving it at the moment um i know one of the big criticisms it got was because deacon kept talking and in all fairness that's one of the things i love about it so i think the people who are whinging about that is just whinging for the sake of whinging but I do think we could maybe see the first footage of the free DLC updates or whatever it is for Days Gone. And because apparently that's releasing in the summer and in all honesty, I'm actually really excited about seeing that. So moving on. Um, I think we're going to get some new gameplay for Ghost of Tsushima. So Ghost of Tsushima is a game, once again, we haven't really seen much on it apart from when it was shown off at... Gamescom 20, not, not Gamescom, Paris Games Week 2018, and it was shown off, oh no, not Paris Gamescom 2018, Paris Gamescom, Paris Games Week 2017, and E3 2018, that's the only times we've seen Ghost of Tsushima in action, and I'm excited about it, I want to see, I want to see some more footage from that. I think Sucker Punch have kind of been out of the limelight for a while now. I'd like to see them come back. And I mean, obviously with how successful Sekiro was as well earlier this year. I think I think the market's now starting to open up again for samurai games. You know, obviously, like I said, we had Sekiro earlier in the year, which did fantastic. Um, we had Onimusha at the beginning of the year, where Onimusha got port again. And I think with Neo 2 on the way, and obviously Ghost of Tsushima, we're going to be seeing a lot more demand for the Samurai games. 
I think we could see some more gameplay, maybe show off a little bit more of the environments um, with a 2020 window. Next thing I think we could see is, I think we are going to get a few trailers which will reveal official release dates. So, first up, I'm expecting a trailer for Concrete Genie. Now, Concrete Genie is a beautiful looking game, and they showed it off in a good bit of detail, I'd say, in the last state of play. So, I think I'm more interested now in finding out when the game is actually available. Obviously, we got a fall 2019 window in the last state of play so if we get an actual release date i'm expecting maybe around november time uh i feel this would make the best sense for concrete genie because normally october tends to be a hellish month for video games uh so i do think concrete genie could be coming out around november 2019 the other game i think will get a trailer with um an official release date is dreams now, Dreams is, of course, the new game from Media Molecule. It follows, um, basically, you get to create your own games, you get to create your own movies, you get to create anything you want in this game. It runs on its own engine, it's... I've got the early access for it, and it's fantastic. Um, you know, I paid the £25 for it, and honestly, it's probably one of the best £25 I've ever spent. Just... The things that people can come up with in this game are fantastic. I mean, if you check somewhere on my channel, there is actually a video for it. Um, someone completely recreated PT, so Silent Hills. Someone recreated that demo, and it was absolutely amazing. They recreated Cuphead, they recreated Super Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog, Crash Bandicoot. Um, if... If, I mean, there's even been stuff like uh, realistic demos where they're showing off guns in real life sort of thing. There's uh, been actual original survival horror games created, like original platformers. It, it, it's fantastic. Like, some of the details and some of the creations on that game have been absolutely amazing. And this is just the bit of those. So I think they're going to reveal the trailer... They're going to show off loads more new features that they're going to incorporate into the full product. And I think we're going to get an August 2019 release date. I feel Media Molecule can't exactly leave this long enough anymore. Because I think a lot of people are now starting to get into the idea of wanting to play it. Due to how well the early access has done. And with that, I move on to... Possibly the prediction I want to make the most, which, in all honesty, I'm probably the most excited about. I think we're finally going to see what Bluepoint's new remake is. And, unlike a lot of people, I don't think it's going to be what a lot of people are expecting it to be. So, as many of you may know, Bluepoint... Uh, in 2018 released a remake of Shadow of the Colossus, the iconic PlayStation 2 title, and they did confirm shortly after that they were working on another remake, and they said it was going to be bigger than Shadow of the Colossus in terms of the quality and scale of the game. <laughs> and this got me thinking a lot. Because there's so many games that a lot of people want to be remade. Um, obviously, a lot of people have said they think it's going to be Demon Souls. Which, of course, was the first entry in the Souls series from From Software. Um, it is a pretty hard to get game now. They did recently shut the servers for the original Demon Souls on the PlayStation 3. And a lot of people are thinking that's a sign of a remake. And another name that I've been hearing getting thrown around for Blue Point is Jack and Daxter. Because obviously Jack and Daxter haven't had an adventure on the PlayStation 4. Apart from of course the re-release of their PS2 games. And in all honesty they haven't had a new game since the PlayStation 2. But. I don't think it's going to go either way. I don't think it's going to go to either Demon's Souls or Jack and Daxter. And. Honestly, I think the remake that Blue Point are working on at this moment in time, and hit me up when I say this, 
is God of War. Now, I feel they're remaking the PS2 God of War game and maybe incorporating God of War 2 into it as well. Um, obviously, you can't get God of War 1 and 2 on the PlayStation 4. But... I feel there is a lot of demand now for God of War. Especially after last year when God of War released. Um, at least the reboot of God of War released. And, you know, we got... Obviously, we got an amazing story. We got some fantastic gameplay. It, it even won Game of the Year. It won Game of the Year against Red Dead Redemption 2. There is a lot of demand for this game. And so, I feel when... Bluepoint mentioned that they are working on a game that is bigger in skill than Shadow of the Colossus. And, you know, obviously, it, it it's huge. And that they've said, you know, they feel it's a game that people are going to be surprised by. I feel God of War has got a really good shot at being that. And... I feel they may try to incorporate some of the gameplay styles of God of War 2018. Now, people are probably thinking, like, thinking, how could this work? I mean, it was a good distinguishment between the two games. You know, obviously, God of War, the original trilogy, was sort of like a top-down, uh, over the short... I mean, it was more top-down hack-and-slash game, whereas... God of War 2018 is more over the shoulder. And I would agree that that is a great distinguishing mark and it should kind of be kept that way. But I feel God of War 2018 is probably where a lot of people became introduced to the character and became introduced to the franchise. And so Blue Point may want to try and remake the other games so that new players can enjoy them without feeling like it's too different. And I mean, when you play God of War 2018, uh, this is a brief spoiler alert for God of War 2018. Okay, I think that should be long enough. So there's a bit in the game where you get the Blades of Chaos. Which are, of course, Kratos' main weapons in the original trilogy. And as soon as you get those Blades, hell, it feels exactly like how you picture the gameplay of God of War the original trilogy being, if it was done from behind the shoulder. And it feels so good, it feels so fluent, it feels so fast. And in all honesty, I feel that is the type of thing that made me convinced that it could be done. They could remake these games with that style of gameplay. So yeah, that is my personal prediction on what I think Bluepoint are working on. I think Bluepoint Games are working on a God of War remake. Next thing for first party that I want to mention very briefly is I think we may see some brief details on the PlayStation 5. Now, obviously we're not getting that on the May 9th uh, Sony Direct. They already said that they have no details to share at this time. But they then followed it with like a sorry so, I'm thinking maybe it's because they don't have details to show at this time because they're showing it a little bit later. I feel we may get a few brief details around this June-ish Sony Direct if it happens, but I feel that we may get a promise of more information by the end of the year. I feel they'll mention at this point that Death Stranding and Ghost of Tsushima will be launch titles as well as a port of The Last of Us Part 2. Or, or they might announce a port of The Last of Us 2 later on. But I, f I definitely feel Death Stranding and Ghost of Tsushima are going to be uh, launch titles along with a new game that they will tease afterwards, which is my next prediction. I feel they're going to tease a new Uncharted game. Now, I know I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this because Uncharted 4 came out 2016. You know, a lot of people think that should be the end of the series. Hell, I think that should be the end of the series in all fairness. But there has been rumours going around it that Sony opened up a new studio primarily to work on an Uncharted game. 
So I feel there could be a new Uncharted game teased. Possibly with this new developer that they've created. I feel they may tease that um, Drake's daughter Cassie is going to be the protagonist. And maybe Drake will fall into the Sully type of role. And I believe it will come 2020 as a PS5 launch title. It's a bold statement to make, but I do think that's what's going to happen. So that rounds out my first party predictions. Um, now we'll quickly move into third party because I don't want this video to be going on forever. So moving on to third party. I feel we're going to see some more footage of Crash Team Racing. I feel we could potentially see some Crash Nitro, more Crash Nitro Kart tracks. Maybe including Velo's um, final boss race stage. I feel we may get potentially some tracks from Crash Tag Team Racing, along with maybe some reference to it. And this is my out there sort of thing for this third party prediction. I feel we may see PlayStation exclusive races. You know, maybe um, if you have a save file for Jack and Daxty, you'll get a Jack, you'll get a Jack playable character, or if you have a save file for Ratchet and Clank, you'll get a Ratchet racer. Sort of similar to how Jack X did it. But, yeah, I, I could see that happening. Um, next one I want to say for third party prediction. And I'm going to mention this in my Xbox one as well. But I will mention it purely because I think if Sony do not have this, if Sony don't have a June state of play, then it's the only place where we'll be seeing it. But I definitely think it's getting revealed this year. And so I think if they do have this conference, we're going to see Resident Evil 3 Nemesis Remake. I feel they'll reveal it, they'll do it ex a similar sort of thing they did with um, Resident Evil 2 when they revealed it. I do think it'll come January 2020. And I think we're going to get to see Nemesis in action. And I want to see... I think maybe we may see... Um, we may see Brad. We may see Brad Vickers getting killed. That's what I think we could potentially see. Uh, so yeah, January 2020, I think we're going to see Resident Evil 3 Nemesis on the way. Next one I'm thinking is going to be a bit of a bit of an out there one. But um, I think if anyone has noticed anything in the past year or so, it's that the franchise Persona has taken the world by storm. Obviously, we had Persona 5 back in 2017. Yeah, 2017. Um, obviously Joker has recently made his way to Super Smash Brothers. You know, we've got, uh, Persona 5 Royal on the way. We've got Persona 5 Scramble, which is, of course, the Dynasty Warrior style Persona game. We've had the Persona 5 and Persona 3 dancing games recently as well. And there's just a lot of love for Persona at the moment. Um... So I feel that they may want to try and cash in. I feel Atlas may want to try and cash in on this whole success. And try and introduce more of the new players towards the previous games. So I think we could maybe get an announcement of a Persona 3 and Persona 4 Golden Remake. Exclusive to the PS4. I feel the Persona... If we have a Persona 3 Remake. It could potentially take elements from both uh, Persona 3 FES. And of course Persona 3 Portable. Primarily, the fact that you could play as a female protagonist. I do feel they may include that, since of course it's something that a lot of the fans loved. It's something that a lot of people were hoping Persona 5 Royal was going to feature. Which of course we were proven wrong, it was just going to be, you know, another Phantom Thief that's joining them. So, yeah. Uh, I do feel we'll get Persona 3... I think we will get the female protagonist back again. Um, and I I think I'd like to see Persona 4 Golden come to the PS4. A good majority of PS Vita games have already been remade for the PS4. Persona 4 Golden was probably one of the highest selling games on the Vita. And it's probably one of the most well received games on the Vita as well. Um, I think if Atlas don't remake it, I think they are missing out on a very big opportunity here. And I mean, obviously, they've got Catherine coming out in September as well, which Catherine has been, you know, there's been a lot of um, talk about Catherine recently. 
good and bad. Um, but yeah, so I feel like Atlas may want to try and bring back Persona fans into the mix with Persona 4 Golden and Persona 3. This is another out there one, but I do kind of want to mention it because I don't know, this is a gut feeling in a way. Um, I feel we're going to see a Konami remake. Exclusive to the PS4. Now whether that be Metal Gear Solid or Silent Hill, I have no idea, but I'm thinking it's going to be one of them too. I have reasons for both. Um, obviously Metal Gear Solid has been rumoured to be getting a remake for a long time. Uh, there was a tweet recently where um, someone... I, I, I'm not sure who it was. I'm sure it was someone in the game industry. Uh, recently tweeted something out where they said, Kept you waiting, huh? Which is, of course, what Snake says in Metal Gear Solid 1. Um, there has also been a lot of talk that there was going to be a remake. Kojima said he'd allow someone to make a remake as long as he trusted them to adapt the source material correctly or to adapt it faithfully and actually have love for the series. Um, there was rumours going around for a while that Blue Point could be potentially working on a Metal Gear Solid remake. Um, but I do feel like, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people wanting to see Metal Gear Solid return to the way it should be, not Metal Gear Survive. And Silent Hill, on the other hand, I feel, now Silent Hill has obviously... It's had its anniversary this year. And there's a lot of people who were saying, that, me, myself included, that Silent Hill should really be getting... It should be getting the treatment it deserves. It should be getting celebrated. It should be getting anniversary collections. It should be getting a remake like Resident Evil 2 did. It should be getting something. And... I think the thing is, Konami didn't even acknowledge it. Konami didn't even acknowledge Silent Hill's anniversary when Silent Hill came out. All they did was retweet other people who were acknowledging it. And one of the primary people I noticed acknowledged it was PlayStation. Now, PlayStation made a whole Twitter post about it, celebrating Silent Hill and obviously commemorating its anniversary. Therefore, I feel if Silent Hill does get a remake, it may be PlayStation exclusive. That may be grasping at straws, but it's it's all I got. I, I, I honestly got... I know Konami have been pretty shitty in the past few years, but... Come on, I mean, you're bringing back Castlevania, you're, you're bringing back Contra, you're bringing back the arcade classics, for Christ's sakes. Bring back Silent Hill. You can. Um... I don't want to get more upset, so I'm going to move on. Uh, I feel we're going to see some gameplay from Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's been a long time coming. I feel, obviously, with it being exclusive to the PlayStation 4 timed, we could see something at a Sony state of play. It seems like the most likely place they'd show it. But I think if they do show off some gameplay... There will be a promise of more information at the Square Enix conference in June. Um, but that's something for another video. Uh, I think potentially they could show off maybe Sephiroth. Or they could at least tease Sephiroth in a, a gameplay video on State of Play. Maybe show off something like Genova in the Square Enix one. Um, but moving on. This is a big out there one, but I'm going to say this. I think we might see the Alien MMO game that was teased. Uh, there's been a lot of hate for Alien recently, especially with the shitty digital series that IGN put out for Alien Isolation. Which, once again, IGN shouldn't have even had that since they hated the game. Sorry, I... I couldn't help myself there. Um, but... They also had Alien Blackout, which was very, very poorly received. Essentially because it was just Five Nights at Freddy's Alien Edition. So, I feel we could see this new MMO shooter Alien game. Hopefully it looks good, but we'll have to see what Fox do. 
I, if it's not announced at any of the major conferences or anything, I do feel we could just see it get information dropped during E3 at some point. Maybe on Jeff Cayley's YouTube show, I don't know. But Alien is a good um, is a good segue into our PSV, PSVR um, predictions. Because that was the last one, of course. Um, and I want to say that there might be a PlayStation VR mode include uh revealed for alien isolation that's a big it's kind of a wild card as well but i'm just putting it out there maybe we will see potentially a vr mode for alien isolation i'd like to say that um i do feel we'll get two new re release dates for two vr games we found out previously in the past uh in the most recent <sighs> damn i I am losing track of my words here. Um that we found out in the March state of play. I feel we will get a release date for Iron Man VR. Obviously Avengers is taking the world by storm at the moment, so revealing information involving one of the Avengers is gonna be a pretty big it's gonna attract a lot of people in. So I feel releasing a re revealing a release date for Iron Man VR could be a big seller. Another one I think they'll reveal the release date for is Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, obviously, there's a big market for Five Nights at Freddy's, e even now, which surprises me. So, I could I could see them two getting release dates above the other VR games that were shown. I also feel we may get free reveals for the PlayStation VR in The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, which, of course, was announced recently by skybound entertainment if i'm correct if i'm correct in uh what i'm saying there was star wars vader immortal and marvel heroes united vr i feel the three of these games could come to the playstation vr at some point and i feel we may get a reveal during a state of play so now i'll move on to my wild cards and hopes because this will pretty much round out the entire video First up, I think we could see Jack 4. There's obviously there was a lot of concept art for what Naughty Dog were doing with Jack 4 before they eventually scrapped it to move on to The Last of Us. Um, yeah, I, I feel Jack could make a comeback at least either at the end of the PS4's life cycle or early into the PlayStation 5. I feel we could get... Uh, Two more reveals, potentially for PS5. It's just kind of like little teasers. I feel we could potentially see God of War 2 or Horizon 2. Personally, I'd be okay with either, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, personally, I'd put my bets more on Horizon 2 out of the two of them appearing. I feel God of War is something we'd probably see maybe next E3. Uh... I'd like to see this, uh, a Twisted Metal reveal. The whole marketing for Twisted Metal on the PS3 was that Twisted Metal appeared on PS1, PS2, and PS3. You know, it appeared on... E Twisted Metal is one of those games where it's pretty much appeared on every iteration of a PlayStation console. To have Twisted Metal go without on the PS4 just because Twisted Metal on the PS3 didn't do well... I think that would kind of suck. Um, so hopefully we see some more of Twisted Metal. Because in all fairness, Twisted Metal was the original Battle Royale game. And I am not sorry about saying that. I feel we could... Continuing on from Twisted Metal, I feel we could maybe even see uh, David Jaffe's new game. Because David Jaffe has been talking about his new game, what he's working on. He said it's a survival horror game. Possibly we could maybe see that at PlayStation. Who knows? I'm just basically throwing that one out there. And the final one is definitely a hope for me. I want to see something PlayStation All-Stars related. A port, a sequel, a reboot. Hell, give me what you want. But just please, please Sony, if you're watching this, please bring PlayStation All-Stars back. Smash Brothers Ultimate, obviously it's done extremely well. It, um... It's probably the game I've actually played the most this year. 
If I'm being quite honest, I've played a lot more of Smash Ultimate than I have of anything else. So, I think I'd like to see PlayStation have another stab at it. Maybe if you're going to do a new one, like a reboot or a sequel, please just don't include characters for the sake of promoting a game. I mean, let's just have... Let's just have a quick talk about the characters they included, okay? Emmett Graves. Who the hell knew Emmett Graves? Let's face it. Facts here. Starhawk's a good game from what I played, but... Who honestly remembers Starhawk? Let's face facts here. Zeus? I like Zeus. Zeus is a good villain. But in a PlayStation All-Star game, no. Just no. Kratos is a fictional character. Okay? Like, Zeus is meant to be actu an actual god. Like, come on. Like, I, and this is the thing as well. Why is Zeus there? There's so many other characters they could have included. I mean, hell, they could have used some of the cancelled characters like Abe from Oddworld or Dot from Legend of Dragoon. But they included Zeus? Like, come on. In t and, and Evil Cole McGrath did not need to be there. Okay? Cole and Evil Cole could have easily been a joint character and it could have worked with a really interesting gameplay mechanic. And don't even get me started on the third party characters, okay? Hihachi should have been there, so Hihachi's excluded. Raiden I can sort of understand because of Snake being in Smash Brothers. Dante should have been in the game, but they used DMC Dante, the Dante that everybody hated. And this is coming from a guy who likes DMC. I like DMC. But that Dante was fucking shit. Okay? <laughs> Big Daddy shouldn't have been there. Big Daddy's more of an Xbox exclusive. Why would, Why was Big Daddy even there? And then Isaac Clarke. I mean, I love Dead Space. I want Dead Space to come back. But Isaac Clarke should not have been there. Okay? Isaac Clarke... I mean, he was there to promote Dead Space 3, which at that point had already come out. By the time his character came out, Dead Space 3 was already out. <sighs> but enough ranting. I mean, if I'm going to talk about characters they could include, include Knack. You know, include Joel and Ellie. Include... Hell, include Deacon St. John if you want to include, like, a recent character. Galahad from uh, The Order. There's so many characters that you could include. But yeah, so that rounds out my Sony predictions for what I think could potentially happen if they decide to do an E3 state, uh, state of play. So I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, once again, just remember the plug from the beginning. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell to be notified, and be sure to comment on thoughts. Or any improvements that I could make. But yeah, until next time guys.